Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at the new ColourPop Holiday Collection. I had to hold myself back from buying the entire collection. I was very excited about the packaging, the concept, the color scheme, everything about this holiday collection from ColourPop had me like, hey. I was reasonable though, I felt with my purchase and I wanted to go over those items with you today. Here in here in the box is very far away. I'm gonna leave it over there. If you want to see swatches, maybe a demo, and all involved, then please keep on watching. Got my hair out today, it's a miracle. I use my huge Diva Curl Super Stretch Coconut Curl Elongator with the Diva Curl Leave-In Decadence. I also sprayed in the Aquas Restorative Leave-In before I hit these products. And to just to fluff it out, I use my Malaya Hair Oil. My favorite hair oil to use, the texture, the smell, is just ideal for when my hair is completely dried or product that I need to fluff it out, but still keep it shiny and nice. You like my nails? Already messed them up because before they completely dried, I had to adjust my camera angle. Well, actually my phone holder angle. Angle. strange word it already start to like well maybe you don't see it too much on camera but this is capricorn from kl polish from the zodiac collection i'm loving the color very Christmassy, or could be very halloweeny you know depending how you look at it again we're taking a look at the new holiday collection from ColourPop. what is it called officially i have a website here let's take a look this is not a dream collection and everything in it is very holographic very rainbowy dreamy like halo and there is some critique about how the collection doesn't reflect holiday but what really is holiday there's traditional santa claus holiday green red and then there could be other types of holiday concepts i feel that are still applicable and i think they really wanted to tap into holiday as a feeling as something that you experience and because here in new york we have a lot of storefronts that have that whimsical nature about the holidays and i think that's what color pop wanted to tap into with this collection i freaking love it man i think it's a nice break from your traditional holiday with the gold silver the red and the greens and you're going into this rainbow holographic scheme i really love it so this is one item that i bought this is the double rainbow super shock shadow collection houses six super shock highlighters and this retails for let me see here. This retails for $25. It, they knocked off $5 and it is still in stock. What I love about this most is not only is it amazing in itself, I think everything in this collection makes for an ideal gift just because of the presentation i think is spot on across the board you have six super shock highlighters but what's really cool is that the individual what are these called pods plastic things the color of the packaging reflects the sparkle in the actual shadow so they're all different and i just think is a nice limited edition touch to the usual super shock shadow packaging i also purchased the chasing rainbows eyeshadow palette and i really loved this palette first of all like look how iridescent the packaging is it's so pretty and i really appreciate this color scheme because you pretty much have a matte to pair with each metallic in that same color which i think is nice if you wanted to do like a purely teal look or a purely purple look or purely pink look or you just want to keep it safe with the neutrals you have all choices across the board this retails for i believe twenty dollars yes twenty dollars and you get 15 shadows next up we have the dream baby dream lippy stick collection this is really cute and actually this packaging of the individual lippy sticks is different from their original i think they really step can't slide this out it's stuck they really stepped up the packaging this is limited edition packaging where you have the this is like a halo band with halo lettering on the actual lippy stick and then you have the cap that basically reflects the color of the actual lippy stick i think it's a really nice touch for the design and again will make a really fantastic gift this set retails for 25 dollars originally priced at 33 i also managed to get three lip glosses let me see yes i purchased three lip glosses and the packaging itself the box is iridescent and the actual cap is holographic and 
again, listen, you can say all you want about holiday this and holiday that. I think this is a phenomenal packaging across the board. I have an ultra metallic lip and three glossy lips. And these individually, well, first, you could get the whole lipstick vault for $80. That's a lot of money. And then you could get them individually. I think they go for $6 each, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, the not, this is not a Dream PR kit sold out, $300. That's what I originally wanted to purchase. And I said, Alicia, do you really need all those lipsticks? Like, really? And I had to have that conversation because I remember all the lipsticks that are in my drawer just looking at me like, you only used me once and she's probably expired. And I thought, do I really wanna add on to that? No, I don't. So I decided to get the ones that really stood out to me. And the one liquid matte that stood out was, was this color that I'll take out of the box so you can see. And an item that I was surprised that I purchased was their Glitterly Obsessed. They looked phenomenal on all the swatch videos I've seen. And these are the boxes that they come in. Like, I don't want to get rid of these because they are just so decorative on their own. Like, you just pop these on on your shelf or something and just have them as a, like, you know, just a little gem of light, which is really not practical, but, you know, I just want to put it out there. Literally Obsessed goes for $8 each, and I got, like, a few of them. There are quite a few on here, but I managed to pick up five. I don't know why, I just, they really called, the, just the color scheme really called to me. I, you know, I don't know. We're gonna see what happens. We're gonna see how those look. Oh, and this is the box that the eyeshadow palette comes in. Again, very holographic and it has the clouds cradling the corners, I think very cute. So let, what shall we start with? So overwhelmed. Let's start with the Chasing Rainbows eyeshadow collection. Again, this is what the inside looks like. And the net weight we have here is 15 shadows weighing in at 1.05 grams each or 0 0.04 ounces each. I wanted to bring up an observation I made. The sleeve says one gram or 0 0.035 ounces, but the actual palette reads 1.05 grams or 0 0.04 ounces. So I don't know which is which. I just wanted to let you know. It's very hard to see, but here you have the shade graph on the back and inside you have a holographic frame with the names under each pan. Very helpful. No mirror, but it's cool. It's fine. Maybe they would have put it in here for the holiday collection. I would have, but that's just my input. Let me pull up the shade descriptions as ColourPop kindly provides those descriptions for us, for us people that don't know how to describe colors very well. Wiggles is a matte pastel peach. Blurred Lines is a metallic gold opal with a gold flip. So Meta is a metallic marigold. Feeling It is a matte red brown with gold flex. Copper flex. Excuse me, copper flex. Realness is a matte deep red brown. Woke is a matte mid-tone salmon pink. Wishless is a matte vibrant coral. Manifested is a matte fuchsia with pink flex. Keep cool is a matte deep orchid. Not playing is a metallic lavender with a pink flip. Lucid is a metallic eggplant with a blue flip. Ooh, I see the blue. That's nice. Oh, you can see it there, man. That's nice. Bring It is a matte teal, nice matte teal. On One is a metallic blackened turquoise. Ooh, running out of room, gotta get in close for these last two. Eclipse is a metallic taupe. I'm gonna put the last one here. Prism is a matte blackened aubergine. Ooh, it's what? Mm. It says it's matte, but there's like some sparkle in here. So this is how it looks like up close. Maybe I gotta use a different finger. I'm gonna use my pinky that doesn't have anything on it. I'm gonna try this again. No, yeah, that's the color. It looks a lot deeper in the pan. Like I thought I was gonna get like aubergine aubergine, but not too bad, still a pretty color, just what not I expected. So here are all the shades from Chasing Rainbows. And I think Christine from Temtalia.com loved this palette. I didn't check out the review, but I just read her caption on Instagram. She's like, I kind of like it. And I was like, ooh, I'm excited. Next up, we have the Double Rainbow Super Shock 
eyeshadow collection. First up, we have Zzz, and this is a metallic copper with a rosy flip. The Super Shock formula is so smooth, so bouncy, and I feel it's just an exceptionally easy way to add that glitz without the fuss. This definitely looks better in person. There is a lot of rosy flip and golden flecks in here. I don't know if you can see it there, and maybe that's a little better for you to see. It is simply gorgeous. And the fact that the, again, the packaging mimics the flip in the Super Shock eyeshadow, Love it. Next we have Rem, which is a periwinkle blue with lavender and silver glitter. Ooh, that's pretty. That's nice. This is like the unicorn shade. I'll do it again just to kind of give it a little more intensity. There we go. That's pretty. This was the shade that I was most excited for. It's the pink one. And by the way, these individually retail for $5. Milky Way is a pinky violet with a blue flip. Look at that. I think the flip is the rim of the compact. Yes, that's what it is. I think that's so cool. But you know, that's just me. I could get excited for a lot of things. It's hard to see, but the blue flip is in the sparkles here. I think this is a really nice shade to pop on on any of the fuchsia, fuchsia, fuchsia powder shades in the palette. That's a nice touch, man. Next up, we have IRL, and this is a vivid yellow green with a bronze duochrome shift. Ooh, I see that duochrome right there. That's pretty. Let me do another. Ooh, I love duochromes, man. I think they're so neat. And again, this is going to add a nice touch to the lid. I treat Super Shock eyeshadows as toppers. I don't really rely on them to be my complete lid shade because I like to layer my lid colors. I go in with the shimmer first, and then to really make it pop off, I'll go in with a topper like a Super Shock eyeshadow or a foil or some sort of like amplification to make the lid really shine and sparkle oh <sighs> we're almost there friends next up we have roy g biv which is a warm pink with a gold duochrome shift Ooh, that's pretty and again gold reflected in the gold rim around the compact so neat i love it lastly falling up an icy taupe with the pink and blue glitter i think this will make a phenomenal inner core highlight or again extra pop on the lid you could do several things with this shade and here are all the super shock eyeshadow shades from the chasing rainbows bundle the double rainbow bundle sorry so many rainbows, can't remember all the names. I will proceed to swatch the lip stuff after we get the eyes done just so you can see them on the lips and kind of get an idea of how they look on my skin tone and overall, I will take it from there. I'm just gonna stop you midway because we gotta do this face. I wanted to do my uh, foundation on camera because I stumbled upon a very happy occurrence. Surprise, I love whole look. I don't know if you know this, but I love them. Well, maybe it was a few weeks ago, but they had Cover FX on sale. And, you know, I always love Cover FX, but they're pretty expensive. So I managed to get their Total Cover Cream Foundation in G60. And let me tell you how much this has been giving me life. We're using it for the last maybe like... I want to say three weeks now and I freaking love this man and I love it especially now in winter time I'm a little drier not like Sahara desert dry but not like summertime moist that was a wrong choice of words oh my god I've been using this non-stop I think the color selection is spot on I mean cover FX has a 40 has a 40 shade range for each of their finishes and that's extensive and i think quite helpful if you're in the market for foundation and they're all about being fragrance free and, and being very about skincare as well as coverage and also very uh keen to work with sensitive skin types that can't deal with crazy ingredients but are going to give them the coverage that they need. What I've been doing, I've been taking my Zoeva 110 face shape brush and I've just been going in and just, you know, getting this foundation on. The finish is exceptional and it covers very well. And I was always, you know, weird about cream foundations because like, oh, that's too much for the day. And I'm like, you know what? If you use the right amount and the right brush tool, I think it's 
quite beautiful and I just like to use a smaller brush just to buff the product into the skin and my skin has already been prepped for my uh, morning skincare routine that I feel is enough for the foundation to lay nicely on isn't that coverage beautiful and the shade I feel is perfect when I did a shoot for cover FX it was very short they just needed faces to showcase the shades on their website they put me in uh n60 but I I like the golden put because it gives me a little more warmth not so much that I look orange or weirdly bronze but just so a little more warmth that I don't look so flat because I'm already neutral and I feel if I go too neutral in the foundation or even the concealer I could look a little dull and gray so if you're anywhere around my skin tone let me know if you experience that as well. I definitely tend to go more golden, even like a little bit of yellow. Now next in with the Born This Way Too Faced Sand and Sinclair. Whatever leftover I have, I'll just put it center of the nose, center of the forehead, and those spots that need a little bit of light. Now in with the ColourPop No Filter Sticks Foundation in the shade Dark 167W. I just like to bring in a little more warmth into my skin. You could use this with, or excuse me, use bronzing powder, but I really love this formula. And I think it ideal for this purpose. I don't put a ton, just enough, again, to provide that that depth and contrast. Same brush and I'm gonna pop that right on the cheekbone and see how that provides the right amount of color and we didn't have to use a whole lot. Gotta be careful on this side because this is the side that gets gnarly. You always wanna brush and buff up. You don't wanna take it down because if you take it down this way, that's when you run into trouble. And if that happens, you just use concealer or a lighter uh, foundation or whatever you have on standby to help carve the bottom. I always have a larger foundation brush on standby. This is my Sigma Flat Angled Kabuki F88. Just so that I could take away some of the product and better buff it into the skin. And if I feel I need a little more lightness, like I need some here, and right under there, that's when I go in my concealer. And usually that's why it's better to go in with concealer afterwards. But you know, sometimes I just forget. But you know, it's so good, you just fix it. But again, I don't wanna look too carved, you know what I mean? Okay, that looks a little better, a little more natural. I don't know, Alicia. I'm like looking for the freaking loose powders right in front of me. Cover FX Perfect Loose Setting Powder in the mini size. I love mini powders. I think they're ideal to travel with. They don't take up much space in your makeup bag. And I feel even if you have to do a lot of makeup, it's, it's going to be enough for the trip. Like, no one's going to use a whole, like, one ounce of jar product, I feel. Unless you're away for a long time and you're doing makeup 10 times a day. But for me, if it's over the weekend or even five days, like this is a great size. I also have on the on whole look, I bought the Cover FX uh, Press Mineral bleh, mineral Powder Foundation. I don't know where it is. I think it's somewhere behind me and I don't want to get up. But I use that to set my whole face and it adds Really beautiful coverage, and I use my Sonja G face one. Beautiful coverage, but does not look cakey or heavy on the skin. It still looks like the skin is silky and smooth. And what I've been doing is taking the Laura Mercier Mini Translucent Medium Deep to set my concealer. And I think this is a great way uh, to add that depth and a little bit of warmth if you don't want to use bronzer because I feel loose powder is a little more forgiving since it is translucent but even with the little color it's a great way to add on color without it looking heavy and I use my same Wayne number two just to set the color pop and whatever I have left I do the very tops of my forehead just to buff out. So new G face one. All right, everything is set and ready to go. I'm gonna use again Too Faced Born This Way on my eyes. Gonna buff that out. If I wanted to clean up, because I'm a little bit, just a little bit anal about my brow. Still, Morphe M421, still with the same concealer. Just carving under the brow a little bit. Cause when I, you know, going in for that close up, I don't want you to see the edges. I'm gonna 
buff everything out, make sure it's smooth on the lid. All right, now that we're ready to start applying these shadows. Oh God, those cuticles look terrible. Let's now start with Chasing Rainbow. I think I wanna do, what shall we do? I think I wanna go pink on the top and maybe purple on the bottom. Let's see. I'm just gonna lightly dust the crease just because I feel uh, ColourPop eyeshadows are fairly pigmented or don't feel the need to go on it with the sticky base to get the most color saturation. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of my ColorFX Loose Powder and just pat down. Oh, this camera's too low. Pat down the conceal a little bit so I don't have to worry about any blending mishaps. Going in with Woke Wayne number 16. See how this goes on the crease. Oh, that's very pink. Got a lot of kickback in the pan as expected from ColourPop mattes. I'm never surprised when, you know, I see it happen. I just pick up whatever flies out of the pan, put it on my brush and put it on my lid. Blending very nicely. I think this makes a beautiful pink transition shade. Same brush now in with Wishlist. Now to the outer V. I'm also gonna place Wishlist on the inner portion of my eye. How's that looking so far? I think this is blending quite nicely. You guess it way number four in with manifest it and i'm gonna pop this Ooh, that's ooh. i want to pop this now on the outer corner to create a little more depth but with the pink oh wow hello you're gonna focus on me that's pretty there is some sparkle in here i do see it but for the most part when you blend it in they disappear which i'm not mad at because i don't want the sparkle to happen on my crease so although i see it in the pan once you apply it on your eyes it might spread around a bit so you might have a little bit of sparkle there but i don't think it's going to be a huge deal and i'm just gently pulling it out to create that winged effect wanted to update you on some news thought the battery i had in line to replace this one when it went out was actually not full so i'm working on a half full battery could tap out at any moment so we're gonna get through this quickly as we can we just applied manifest it i want to add a little extra depth now with my sony g worker one with let me see here i want to do keep it cool or just keep cool excuse me right over manifest it okay we like that i'm lifting up my brow so i can see what's actually happening blend wise now the problem is usually when i layer matte on matte on matte that it has it's less likely to stick but i feel because of how well the worker one puts on product we could be a little more successful in that department remember how bright it was like an hour before because i had to take a break waiting for my battery to juice up again so it kind of blended out on this side i'm trying to work it in but again, I feel like it's hard when I do matte on matte that now it's like just blending away. But I think it added some depth. I'm just using my Wayne number four to help blend out these edges. I definitely want to go in with one of the Super Shock shades, Milky Way. And I'm going to use my finger to apply the shade to my lid. Ooh, wait a minute. That's pretty. You can really see the purple or the blue reflex now because since it's pink on pink, the contrast is more recognizable and if we wanted to add a little bit of pop we could go in with this shade not playing i'm gonna put that on a finger and just take it to the lash line was that even the color that wasn't even the color that was another color altogether. what are you doing Ooh, probably put a little too much but you know what what should we do on the lower lash line you know what i think i'm gonna go in with bring it it's very weird i know i just kind of want to see how these you know shadows are happening zoeva 234 smoky shader in with that teal matte shade and you're gonna pull it across my lash line oh yeah that's blue i'm using padding motion so it doesn't get too out of control so it bleeds into the pink i'm looking up so i see what's happening and also i feel if i look down the application wouldn't be as good for some extra pop i'm going in same brush but now on one i'm gonna drag it across 
on top to bring it. Ooh, got a little bit of fallout with that shade. I definitely loaded the brush, so that was inspected. I carefully brush that away. And happy to report that I did not experience any fallout with the pinks. Well, this is a really intense lower lash line. I don't think I was ready. I'm taking my Luxie 120 and just cleaning up right under here. You know what? In fact, I'm gonna take my Morphe M5, excuse me, my N421 to kind of carve under to take away some of the blue. I took some of my Color FX foundation to make that happen. Now with folding up, admired this shade and I thought it would make a nice inner corner highlight. So I'm just taking that between the pink and the blue. All right, let's apply some mascara and I'll be right back. Apply some mascara and I also applied the Marc Jacobs Gel Liner in Gemstone. I thought it was a perfect addition to that turquoise smoke we got going on. My lower lash line looks so crazy. You know what? That's the look. And this side is so much higher than this side. What is going on? I wanted to use one of the shadows as my blush just to kind of see how that works out. I wanted to go in with Woke. And because the, the pan is really small, I'm gonna use my Wayne number two and just see how that applies. Oh, that's nice. I like that. And it pulls in together nicely with the eye because the same color is on our crease, you know, somewhere in there. And also I wanted to go in with blurred lines as a highlighting shade. I might have to use something smaller. I'm gonna use my Inglot 4SS in with blurred lines. Use that as a highlight. These are one of the shades or textures that you really have to buff into the skin because it starts off powdery, but once you buff it in, you're left with a really beautiful gold sheen on the cheekbones or you know on your lid wherever you apply this shadow because you know it's an eyeshadow but I just take it as a powder and I put it wherever not too bad go in with the fan and let's try on some of these lip colors first up we have at twilight and this is a warm muted coral a little pinky maybe not my favorite might have to mix it in with something else texture though very creamy very comfortable on the lips next up we have dream date and this is a pale warm nude this didn't have as much glide as at twilight it's actually a little stickier and to top it off i want to see how it looks with my versatile chestnut pencil for makeup forever this is my go-to nude now and what i use as an emergency step if i feel the lipstick is too nude that doesn't look too bad. I probably would have gone in with this first, but just to kind of rectify it, I don't think it looks too bad now. So I probably will take this step if I wanted to apply, what was this it? Dream date again. Next up, we have Happy Thoughts, and this is a deep rosy mauve. This is perhaps, I think, the best texture that I've encountered out of the six, because at Twilight had a little bit of shine, a little bit of slip. Dream date was a little tighter, and this I feel like is right in the middle, and I really think it a beautiful rosy mauve, just like they said. It feels really creamy on the lips. It's not transfer proof. You know, you'll get this somewhere if you on something. And can I just note the design of these I feel is ideal because since it's small, you can really carve around the edges of your lips without messing up. Next up, we have Are You Surreal? And this is a matte, vibrant, hot pink. Gorgeous shade. Probably my favorite so far out of the ones I tried. Definitely the driest that I have experienced thus far, but that is vibrant just as- Look how neon -y that looks, my god! And of course, these are, I forgot to mention, in the actual set, you have three, let me see here. Ah, okay, the first two are creams, two mattes, and then two matte X finishes, and I think matte X is perhaps why the hot pink formula felt drier because it is supposed to be. Oh, but this is a lot smoother than the hot pink one. Skywalking is a matte X classic blue red. Easy to apply. I think this is an ideal lip to have just because again of its size and the color is like the true blue red I think is suitable for all occasions. Lastly, we have Infinite Best and this is a matte X warm black cherry. All across the board, I really love them. At Twilight, it needs a little bit of zhuzhing, and of course, Dream Day, I need to add the versatile chestnut or else it'll look too nude and my lips will just get lost in my face. I am very excited to show you the next lip. This is an ultra metallic lip. 
in the shade nimbus individually these go for six dollars and again i am in love with the iridescent packaging and the design on the tube itself is exclusive to the holiday collection and check out this hollow top i mean gorgeous packaging and design this is a metallic sangria look at that saturation and depth i mean Mm. and it feels good although it's a metallic lip it doesn't feel tight on the lips i know i just applied it and it needs a little time to dry down but mm, i don't know it feels good to me and look at the sheen and just the the shade and the tone absolutely beautiful i think ideal for the holidays or any time of year for that matter even if you want to wear this for summer why not if it's summertime where you are who cares but you know if you want to get into the winter season like the cozy wines and the reds this is perfect next we have an ultra glossy lip in around midnight oh my god and this is a blush pink with soft pink glitter I think it has a milky tint to it that's gorgeous on its own, but maybe ideal if you were to layer it over a pinky lip, whether it's metallic, uh, satin, matte, or cream, I think will add a really nice touch. And I am a huge fan of their Ultra Glossy Lip Formula. I've actually repurchased Fantasia, which has been an ideal beige nude shade for me. So nice. Creamy, soft, smells like vanilla. I love it. Next we have Starburst, which is an ultra glossy lip and it's a clear with bronze and blue glitter. Doesn't feel gritty, even though there's ton of glitter here in the formula, but I think it has a nice touch with the blue and the bronze specs. Next we have Hypnotease and this is a vivid gold. Again, despite the glitter flecks in here, it still feels smooth, comfortable on the lips and it's a beautiful shade. That looks nice and shiny. Mm, I like that. Now let's take a look at these glitterly obsessed. My battery's about to run out, so I might have to re-up it again, but that's fine. We're gonna do what we can. The first shade up we have is Avenue of the Stars. And this formula has a bouncy texture to it. Let's see what it says. Glitterly obsessed, a high voltage glitter pack gel paste that provides intense sparkle and shine, each featuring a unique blend of multi-dimensional and multicolored glitters. This formula first launched with the Bretman Rock collab, which I didn't get anything from because I'm like, I just need to stop. It was very overwhelming with how much ColourPop uh, makeup I bought like at in one period of time. And I was like, relax. So I decided to wait and I'm glad I did because I think I like these shades better than the ones in the collection. Glitters are suspended in an adhesive gel formula. That means there's no need for glitter glue. Take your look up a notch or 100. Now, Avenue of the Stars is a bright fuchsia with a galaxy of silver and bronze holographic glitter. <laughs> holographic glitter. I tried these on last night just for fun, and I have to say, they're pretty easy to remove if you wash your face. If you don't want to deal with a lot of glitter, what I did, so let me first show you how I apply it. I just take... Ooh, that's a little bit too much if you just want to have fun with it you could place it on your cheekbone like so just so it cradles your eye look or whatever you did and then you have a lot of like you know sparkle up in there and i think it's so pretty i mean it's very hard to see on camera it definitely looks better in person but it's a lot of fun just to have as an extra option if you like to go to festivals or whatever parties and events and you want to zhuzh up your look and make it look different i'm gonna put another one on my shoulder and what i was saying is before going in with washing your face i would take tape and remove the majority of the glitter specks first and then wash off whatever is left behind this is the one that was hollow 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 this is outside the lines and this is a true gold bursting with fine holographic glitters Ooh, okay this is the one that's hollow 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 i'm gonna put that on this side Ooh, and that looks so good over the eyeshadow shade we applied on our cheekbone. Look at that. That's pretty. Now, I know you can't waltz into the office like this, but if you are attending, again, a party or what have you, like, this is so fun. I think that's a really pretty shade. And if you want to see it on the skin, take a shower, it comes right off. Now, I do scrub with the washcloth usually, so I think that'll be a more ideal situation. Look at that. That's pretty, ooh. Hello, are you gonna focus on me? Look at that shine. See, that is, that is hollow. Hello is me, Christine, again. I couldn't help myself. I freaking love Christine. Simply neological. I love you. Next up, we have, what is this? Dream About Me. Dream About Me is a bright metallic copper. It shifts from orange and green. Look at that. 
that's oh i see it i see the shift i see the shift baby let's put it on the other shoulder let why not let's let's have some fun oh oh wait a minute i love that oh yeah oh oh i see the shift look meow, meow. that looks pretty let's put it like here just for kicks you know what i'm saying oh i see it that's a pretty shift of my doodle now huge disclaimer the camera is so low when dealing with glitter you will get glitter everywhere it will probably stay behind even if you wash your face and it is a huge thing to think about if you don't want to deal with that don't get this product i don't know why i got this these glitter lips i think i was just intrigued by the formula and it they made it sound so easy to use and i thought like why not and of course sometimes if i do find myself uh doing nightlife again or what have you if you are in uh the aerial circuit i think these are really great to put on for your costume if you have any skin showing it just adds that extra glitz because if the light hits that that's gonna look bomb the last shade did i do star party already i didn't i think i <laughs> I got, got so many. The next two we have Star Party and Puffin. Star Party is this insane, that's what it says, holographic glitter, silver glitter with a constellation of micro fine and large glitters. Oh, oh, oh man, look at that. That looks pretty. That is definitely some silver hollow. Just for fun, I'm just gonna put it on my forehead because you know why? This is why we're here. Oh, that was a little too much. Never mind. I wish I had a flashlight so you can see like the reflect because man, it is so pretty in person. And again, if you're a performer and you want that extra glitz, I think these are ideal to get. But if you hate glitter, don't get these. And I'm not a festival person. I have admitted to the Coachellas and the Burning Mans, okay? But if I happen to find myself in that situation, I'm ready. Last one. Last one. We have Puffin, and this is a fluorescent canary yellow glitter with an intense orange and green duochrome shift. Here it is. Oh, I see. I see the shift. Let's put it on the other collarbone, shall we? Oh, that's pretty. I like that a lot. This, I feel, is more suitable for my skin tone. It just kind of, ooh, look at that. Yeah. This is what I like to do if these are not completely eye safe, but because I have such a crazy lash line already, I think if you just wanted to put a little bit under the lash line, not like all up in your tear duct and waterline, don't do that, but just under, and I think it kind of still gives the illusion that you're crying glitter or it kind of gives that same effect. Especially if you blow out your shadow, it'll kind of melt and it'll appear as such and it won't look too out of place. How are looking, crazy? I know. Look at these shoulders. Whoa, whoa. Whew, this was really tough to film today. Batteries kept on dying, but you know what? We're still here. I still have to come back here and do another look using the new nude, but I also want to come back on here and do another look using Chasing Rainbows. For the most part, I'm really happy with what I purchased, even the glitters. I know I look nuts, but it's just a nice change from what I've been using. And it's good to know that I have a choice if I wanted to kick it up, make a change, if I do wanted to add body glitter, and I'm able to easily. Like, this is very easy to apply. And do make sure to use, again, if it's your face, use tape to gently take off the majority of the glitter because if you try to wash all this as is, you're gonna get glitter everywhere and you'll probably have still some left behind after the rinse. I would take off the majority even on your body, like maybe take a sticky roller and get the majority of the flex off first and I think you'll have a lot easier of a time washing this off completely. I had quite a bit on my shoulder last night when I was just playing and I have like one of those like Japanese charcoal line washcloths that I use every day and I found that that really washed off the glitter well and I didn't have any specks after I rinsed and dried. I love the lip products and I'm so happy that I didn't buy the vault because although I wanted it to I again remembered how many lip products I have that I have not used a ton of and I they're just you know sitting in my drawer lonely and i'm happy that i got the lip glosses that i did because this i felt was like the best color out of the lip bulb in terms of like a ultra matte or ultra satin ultra metallic 
The formula on this is sublime. It goes on smoothly, easily. The shine and the color itself is just sensational. I love the ultra glossy lip. I think in general, the ultra glossy lip formula from ColourPop is perhaps one of my favorite gloss formulas. I use them nonstop. The fact that they're, I believe, $6 each, I think is a great price. You get how many ounces of product here? 3.2 grams or 0.11 ounces. Not too bad. And again, this packaging, like, come on. I can't take it. I didn't get the Dream Sequence Super Shock Highlighter Palette because from the looks of it, I think I like the highlighter palette from the Fall Edit Collection better. And I have so many Super Shock highlighters already. I was like hold on everything i bought i think it came to 134 which isn't bad for the amount of product that i purchased six super shock eyeshadows five glitterly obsessed glitters one the lippy stick set that came with i think six lippy sticks one two yep six an eyeshadow palette with 15 shadows uh three lip glosses and a metallic lip not too bad it also came with a makeup bag that Although I wanted initially, I'm like, it's okay. Now, since this dried down, it's not tight on the skin, but I do feel like I have glitter on my face. It's still comfortable. It's not like weird feeling or dry feeling, but if you don't like anything of that sort to be on your face, then again, don't buy the Glitterly Obsessed. I really love the eyeshadows. I think these have great saturation, great color, and the fact that I feel it has a really wide spectrum of shades to use. If you wanted to go, again, exclusively turquoise, you have the matte and the shimmer to do that with. You wanted to go exclusively fuchsia, the matte and the fuchsia shades, exclusively purple, lavender, exclusively gold and tan or brown. Like You just have a lot more options and the mattes to help you achieve that eye look with. Because I find that some palettes have like a metallic turquoise, but then they only have like neutral mattes. And it's like, well, maybe I want to go a little crazy and do an all turquoise eye. And in order for me to achieve that, like I need the turquoise matte to really pop it off. A lot of choice here across the board to create either colorful or neutral looks. If you decided to get any of the Super Shock shadows, I would get the set because these are insanely cute. I mean, the fact that the compacts are different colors and the packaging it comes in with is just like out of this world beyond. And I love how these are packaged. I think they're very easy to store and to travel with if you decide to travel with them. They screw on pretty tightly and securely. And they do come with a lid that I would highly recommend you keep these on so they don't dry out because again, it is a gel paste formula. I'm very happy with everything I purchased, but I'm also happy that I held back because knowing myself in ColourPop and knowing what I love from them, I'm happy that I made the decisions that I did. Of course, I wasn't gonna get the eyeshadow palette hands down because I really love ColourPop's eyeshadow formula. I love their lip products. I think their lip products are solid across the board. Their liquid mattes are a little drying so if you're not into an ultra drying formula because it is matte, I will steer clear of those. Generally, I feel their ultra satin lips are their most popular formula because although they're not transfer proof, they feel more comfortable but they don't dry too shiny and they don't dry too matte right in the middle but the texture is smooth and feels again very comfortable on the lips and they have a really great color selection in that formula but i have to say because of this collection like i keep forgetting how much i love their lippy sticks first of all these are so lightweight i think they're easy to pack and the fact that the actual uh bullet is thin and the fact that it's tapered at the top makes for a seamless application to trace around your cupid's bow or even on your bottom lip so you don't have to rely on a liner if you don't have one at that time and it's just ideal to apply they're all out of order now but you have news you got the deep uh maroon shade and then you have the pink and the red the pink blew me away man i was not ready for how neon that magenta was gonna look it is the driest feeling formula out of the bunch it doesn't have as much glide as the deep uh, maroon and the classic red do. So just be prepared. You might have to apply some balm and blot off before you apply the, uh, the hot pink one, but the shade, phenomenal. The nudes are okay. I felt that Dream Date, the lighter nude shade, I believe it's here. I thought it was gonna be a little more 
a pigmented and a little more taupey in nature, I can make it work. It does come out sheer than the reds and the pinks out of the palette. It's still a pretty shade. The one I'm not going to probably use often is Dream Date because that came out very peachy coral. And I should have known just from the pictures, but I thought I would give it a shot anyway and just get the set. And I could probably adjust the color or apply it just to the outer corners of my mouth to give it warmth, but not for it to look totally peachy warm. And again, the red, the red was great. It's not, it has been done before. We've seen this red before. Hello, Pat McGrath Elson. But it is cheaper. And if you can't afford Pat McGrath, but you're looking for that matte, true red, blue lipstick, this is the one. And the deep maroon shade. Oh my God. So gorgeous. Feels great. Glides on perfectly. I couldn't ask for a better set. I feel the nudes are weaker than the reds and the pinks. But overall, for $25, six shades and each one comes at one gram each 0 0.035 ounces each not bad individually i think these go for 550 550 is not bad at all like you can't beat it man i also believe that their super shock highlighter shades that come in the palette also are sold as singles so if you don't want to get the palette but there's one shade in the palette that you're like gunning for you can still get it as a single and that retails for eight dollars let me know down below if you picked up anything from the the dream collection i know that's not the name that's all what's coming to mind right now i'm so sorry if you tried anything if you're thinking about uh buying something and yeah we'll take it from there and that my friends is a wrap thank you so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another demo tutorial chit chat or review take care and i'll see you again soon